At this hour, there are hundreds of thousands of people here in Tiananmen Square, perhaps as many as a half a million, even more. In the history of communist China, there has never been anything like this. For the first time in huge numbers, the ordinary men and women of Beijing, the old and the young, professors and taxi drivers, have joined the student protests, lending their support to what has now taken on all the appearances of a peaceful popular uprising against the oppressiveness of communist rule, a campaign for China's renewal in an atmosphere of freedom and democracy. The government has to admit that this demonstration is a patriot demonstration. In an unprecedented development, members of the Chinese Army's supply department joined the protest, the first time any section of the security forces has endorsed the students' cause. While Mikhail Gorbachev was talking inside the Great Hall of the People, a thin line of police kept guard outside. But their presence was only symbolic. The students and their supporters are in firm control of the heart of Beijing. The 3,000 student hunger strikers remain at the core of the protest. In the brutal heat, they were collapsing and being rushed off to hospitals every few minutes. But there was no weakening of the protesters' resolve. As the afternoon wears on here, the crowd gets bigger and bigger, and there are some extraordinary groups lending their support to the students. In the past few minutes, a research group of the State Council, that's the Chinese cabinet, has marched into the square, waving its banners to the applause of many here. There were also uh, a, members of a publishing branch of the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party. So the phenomenon we're witnessing now, as this protest gets bigger and bigger, is that people from the branches of the government itself are joining in, lending their support, uh, hoping that this protest uh, will produce results, that the government will respond to the students' demand for meaningful dialogue and be in, begin to implement the kind of genuine reforms as opposed to cosmetic reforms that the students want. There is an electric atmosphere here with all of the banners and singing and chanting. A band went by a little while ago playing old marching tunes from the communist guerrilla army of the 1930s. Trucks have been whizzing by, filled with people waving banners. The closest parallel that I can think of to this is people power in the Philippines in 1986. It has that same quality, an entire society turning against its rulers, but doing so in a peaceful manner. That is what is noticeable with this size here. This is a peaceful revolutionary movement for change in China.